Hello everyone and welcome back to another video about Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous here on the Jurassic Park podcast. So today I wanted to take the time to break down three key points which I think give us a nice flavour of what Camp Cretaceous will mean for the future of the Jurassic franchise. Now we are going to be talking about spoilers so make sure you are caught up with season one of Camp Cretaceous before you watch this video as we will be talking about what this could mean as we approach Jurassic World Dominion. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first point I wanted to raise is the fact that Camp Cretaceous deliberately goes out its way to uh, make reference to InGen's Martel facility, which is the facility in Siberia that excavated the Siberian mammoth remains. So we see these remains in Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous in Dr. Wu's lab, um, and this is a nod to a facility that was first teased through the Masrani Global backdoor during the film's marketing campaign. Now, this is interesting, as recent uh, photos from Jurassic World Dominion's filming, posted by Colin Trevorrow on Instagram, do show that we are filming in snowy locations, and indeed recent set photos from The Hollywood Reporter reinforce this idea. So is it possible that we could see this facility where this mammoth has come from making an appearance in Jurassic World Dominion? While we know a lot of factors are at play in the upcoming story, we do not actually know what the story is going to be about at this point, so I think it's safe to say that anything is fair game, including an old in-gen facility out in the wilds of Siberia. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this first point, it's probably the least likely, uh, but it's something which I think would be quite cool to see regardless. Okay, and then following on from the first point, we also have an interesting point about genetic modification. So in episode 6, we are introduced to the idea that Dr. Wu has been experimenting with the genetics of dinosaurs through the bioluminescent Parasaurolophus which are present. Now, this poses an interesting question, because is it possible that some of the dinosaurs released from Lockwood Manor at the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom could in fact have similar sort of genetic modifications to them. We could see potentially behavioural problems like those which Toro has, or we could see other things like bioluminescence out in the wilds. And I think that poses an interesting question for how these dinosaurs will affect the ecosystem of the world in Jurassic World Dominion. And then lastly, it's worth pointing out that there is obviously now a prevalence of other biogenetics companies apart from Biosyn. So in Camp Cretaceous, we see the drone from Manticore, who we know Sammy was spying for. Um, and we also get a hint that Eddie is potentially working for another company. Now, this could also be Manticore or it could be a different biogenetics firm. We simply do not know at this point. So there is the potential for four companies, if not definitely three companies, to have been working on dinosaurs at some point between 2015 and the current timeline. So that does mean that by the time we're at Jurassic World Dominion, these other companies may have living, breathing dinosaurs. And that could be a way for us to explore different designs, maybe more paleontologically accurate designs, but also uh, potentially introducing new dinosaurs altogether who knows um now it will be interesting to see if any of these do tie back to mills or vic hoskins um and i do recommend checking out jurassic outpost uh because they have a good video which breaks down everything you need to know about manticore uh, so there's a lot there uh, in terms of manticore specifically but also potentially some wider ways to tie in all of these different genetics firms so those are kind of the three main things that we think will impact the Jurassic franchise moving forwards from Camp Cretaceous, but obviously there is a lot in this show to digest, and there really is the potential for anything to be tied into it at this point. With that said, I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Do let us know in the comments down below. Is there anything we missed that you potentially think will be a big connection in the future? And is there anything you'd like them to tie into future seasons? 
Do stay tuned here on the Jurassic Park podcast. We're planning on bringing you an episode by episode breakdown very, very soon. And we've got lots of other great content in the pipeline for all things Camp Cretaceous.